Legend has it there is a land where knights battle for honor, where dragons fly through the air, where you can experience your wildest dreams or your darkest nightmares. It's time to live the legend of Camelot. To a brand new adventure and today we're here at Camelot theme park so welcome to the former site of the Camelot theme park and we've been given special access today to come onto the site so join us as I take you on another adventure before we begin the explore of the site let's take a look at the history of the park and its downfall Located in Charnock Richard, three miles west of Chorley, and built around the grounds of Park Hall. An old medieval manor house that was also built on the site of a former monastery. Camelot Adventure Park opened in 1983 under the ownership of Park Hall Leisure, who also owned the former Park Hall and converted it into a modern hotel complex. It was the brainchild of one John Rigby, who also pioneered its later sister park, the American Adventure, near Nottingham. The Camelot and King Arthur theme was chosen for the park, due to Park Hall's medieval roots and links to the local legend of Sir Lancelot. He is said to have been knighted Sir Lancelot of the Lake by King Arthur's court, the lake being Martin Mir that once occupied this area as the largest body of fresh water in England. When the park first opened, it was billed as the greatest magical adventure playground that every child has dreamed of, with only a handful of attractions from a large adventure playground to animatronics, shows, smaller rides and a touring caravan park. The park and the hotel ran alongside one another and would make it the first theme park in the UK to have its own on-site hotel. Further changes and investment came in 1986 when the Park Hall Company was purchased by the Granada TV Group, who would also own the American Adventure Theme Park and Granada TV Studios. They moved the main entrance from near the side of the hotel, which was now known as the Camelot Theme Park Hotel, and built the famous White Castle entrance area known as Queen's Court and King's Square, along with adding major attractions such as the Lock Flume, Caterpillar Coaster, Dragon Flyer, and the live-action theatrical shows. Towards the end of the 1980s, the Granada Group had grown the park into a major attraction and changed it from an adventure park into a theme park, bringing along with them famous TV properties such as Sooty and pulling in over half a million visitors per year. The park was also expanded when the touring caravan park was removed and replaced by a whole new area of the park opening as Land of the Brave with the famous Tower of Terror roller coaster in 1989. The park now covered an area of 140 acres and was set across three different elevations and sites. You have the main hub of the park located in a natural valley, whilst the park entrance, car parking, hotel and thrill rides were all located on a higher plateau surrounding the central hub. The park's popularity started to dwindle in the mid-90s, as competition from other parks started to grow. The park failed to invest accordingly and was soon left behind, and visitor numbers started to drop. In 1998, it was subject to a management buyout and became owned by Prime Resorts Limited. They attempted to invest further in the park, but with further declining visitor numbers, they couldn't raise the funds to compete with other parks. They attempted to add a major investment of a Vekoma in Vertigo roller coaster in 2002, but this was declined planning permission by the local council in the year 2000, just after they had already removed some major rides such as the Tower of Terror to make room for this new investment. 
removing some of their major attractions and having permission refused for their new hopeful crowd pulling attraction was a major blow to the park and they struggled to recover fully afterwards. One final attempt came in 2007 when they opened the Nightmare Roller Coaster, which was bought second hand from a park in Japan. This seemed to attract some people back to the park but failed to stop them going into receivership in 2009. The park closed for the first part of the 2009 season, but it had a promised reopening in the summer. After the hotel was sold off to Lavender Hotels and the park was purchased by Story Homes Limited, the park would be leased back by Knight's Leisure to operate until 2012. Finally, it was announced after the 2012 season that the park would be closed permanently and the site would be turned into a new large housing development blaming a decline in visitors and a poor summer of weather. All the major rides and attractions were sold off to other parks, whilst the Nightmare Roller Coaster failed to sell and was eventually scrapped in 2020. Multiple planning applications for housing developments have been rejected by the local council and the site sat abandoned for many years. Most of the land was cleared in 2020 leaving behind some features and buildings that still exist today. The Park Hall Hotel now also stands derelict after some bad management decisions and will hopefully reopen under new ownership very soon. The former park is leased on a regular basis by Park and Party of Manchester to run their annual Scare City event that uses the abandoned park backdrop as a spooky setting for a very popular Halloween attraction. They have kindly allowed me to explore the site fully throughout the day and that's what we are going to do across this series of videos. So join me for a full explore of the site with plenty of surprising discoveries, nostalgia and some photo memories thrown in as we explore the former Camelot theme park. So if you remember the park at all, you remember that there used to be a grand entrance just up here where these trees are and you used to make your way inside the park through the gate there and once you were in here you would have had the huge white castle right in front of you there which we'll go take a look at very shortly. So here we are on the former go-kart track that used to be right at the side of the entrance as you came in and you can see the tarmac down here behind me, I'll just show you around. You can see the banking just there and the tarmac all around here and you made your way into the park and then made your way around there in front of the castle and down into the main park itself the actual castle like I said was here and you could go inside there and that was a huge entertainment complex and just below the go-kart track we've got another foundation for a large building here all around here you can just see the concrete foundations there of the former buildings that used to exist and the old pathway here but unfortunately today, that white castle, the iconic castle, has gone all raised to the ground. But it did stand up until probably three or four years ago, it was still there. And here we are looking at the former site of the castle. You can see the concrete foundation there. And if I just venture over to the right hand side here, you can see one of the old turrets that used to stand there. The old former entrance down into the valley here but here was one of the turrets and there's another one just there so here you would have made your way through a gate here and down into the park and also at the top here you remember the former white towers in front of the castle where you can see the foundations for those right here you can see the circles on the floor so there you go there's two there and then the entrance into the castle you can still see the flooring down there look Looks fairly new that as well, but it isn't. And then again, two more turrets here on the other side and another one on the far side over there. You can see the flooring as it would have been inside and then the various boundaries where the walls would have been inside the castle there. Just seems weird. I remember coming in here and they had a big amusement arcade, a play area. I think they even had a dodgems in here at one point as well. So this is the route you would have taken as a member of the public as you entered the park you had the castle on your left here 
There's some of the old foundations there for the castle building. It's just amazing how iconic that building was with Camelot. Everybody remembers it because it was the main entrance building. Just a bit of girder down there for the structure and concrete. That is all that's left. So we're just making our way round behind what was the castle building and onto the former site of the Beast roller coaster. So let's just take a closer look at that. There was a large roller coaster, indoor roller coaster, right there on that, that concrete pad there. It used to be called, when I came anyway, it was called the Beast, but it did change names multiple times. And there was a little, like a rock facade around it. And that was the building right there. And no, they did rebuild it here. They demolished the large facade that was around it. And then they put the roller coaster back many years later, just as a roller coaster on that concrete there. Let's just have a little look behind the old White Castle building. Again, you can see one of the girders there. For the corner, lots of tiles down here. And you can see that famous white rendering there that they used to have all around the castle building. So we've just come further behind the castle. So you had the White Castle building just up there on the hill and then the indoor roller coaster, the Beast, was there. And then there's this large concrete pad right here. Again, I'm not sure what this was. Maybe a car park behind the castle building or something like that. I never remember anything being this far behind it, but you can tell there was something here. Maybe some staff buildings or something like that. Because if you look down here as well, you can see more concrete bases, maybe a toilet block or something. I just found this in the trees. Looks like some kind of a, an inflatable or maybe a tarpaulin cover from something in the park, no doubt. If I remember rightly, this was the entrance to the log flume ride, which was just over here. So we'll go see if we can find the base of the splashdown. But I remember the entrance gate being right here, and you made your way round. And I think the caterpillar coaster was on my right-hand side here. I do remember that as we walk round. You can see the pathway here. And I remember queuing up the side of the log flume. And you can just see the old former splashdown here. And you can see what remains of the, the wall there, at the side of the ride. And possibly what appears to be a queue line. I think it had like a zigzag queue. And then you made your way down this path, I believe. It's that long since I've been, I've totally forgotten. And down to the Log Flume ride, which would have been down here. And here we are looking over the site of the Log Flume. So you had the big facade for the drop there, right in the middle. And it made its way around the back there. And we're just making our way up towards the log flume site. You can just see the large retaining wall there that would have held the plunge pool for the log flume back on this hillside here. I'm stood on this site now of the plunge pool for the log flume. And you can just see a lot of rubble here now. And that former banking just there. You can see the blue waterproof material there that would have lined the edge of it. I think a lot of the rubble from the castle is probably dumped in here. You can see a lot of the white rendering on the floor here. Uh, we just found this in the trees right at the side of where the log flume would have been and the castle. It looks like a water feature to me, a fountain, because you can see the blue paint there. And you can see the old pond liner as well at the back. So yeah, maybe a pond or a fountain of some sort. You may remember this steep pathway here where you used to walk down as you came in to get down into the bottom level of the park down there. We will head down there very shortly. But just on the top of the hill here, right in front of you, would have been what was known as the Pendragon's Plunge, which was the three blue water slides. You used to board a dinghy and go down there. And it was right here where these concrete blocks are. So I take you to the edge, you can still see the foundations of the building right there. And that's the flooring. So I would have been stood inside the station building now. And then you would have descended down the hill on a water slide, straight down there, and got out at the bottom into the main park down the side there.
thank you very much for watching that first video. Join me in the second part where we're going to venture further around the site. There's a lot more to see. I'll see you next week. Bye.